Greetings, my brothers and sisters. Greetings, young people. Welcome to our camp meeting under the theme as Christ Ambassador, I will go. It is a privilege for me to share with you some of the departmental highlights. I am Pastor um, Togozi Stube, heading the youth ministries, campus, music, and chaplaincy uh, ministries. God is calling you like Joshua, God has called us to lead the young generation. And the question is, are you going to decline or will you answer the call? And maybe you just let the phone ring unattended until it's a missed call. I have a very special message for you today. Firstly, to the parents, to the guardians, to the mentors and the youth leaders. And secondly, I also want to address uh, and extend an invitation to the young people to join me as I will go, as the theme says, I will go make a change, I will go be the sermon, I will go and be the hands and the feet of Jesus Christ. Joshua called, uh, God called Joshua and like Joshua was called of God, God is calling the young people and is calling also the leaders, the parents and the guardians to lead the young people. God is calling us to lead them to realize uh, better than themselves, to realize better than they can achieve because of your leadership. Now, Joshua conquered uh, the land in seven years. And I wonder what we might accomplish through the grace of God if we will allow God to use us. And so I'm going to present before you a simple vision and strategy for leading our young people in fulfilling the vision. Uh, I'm sure you are acquainted with the mission of the youth ministries leading the young people into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ, to lead the young people into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ and to help them embrace his call to discipleship. That is the mission of uh, the youth ministries. Our office begins with uh, sharing a text from uh, Psalm 127 verse 4. And I'm reading from the KJV. The Bible says, like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Now, if you uh, take a good a closer observation of the young people, what is it that you see? What picture emerges out? What words will describe the, the, plight, uh, the flight of our young people? Isolated, or maybe you may see them in, as lonely or lost, somehow existing in the crossroad, in the intersection. They say in the, in, in the in betwixt, that is neither here nor there. I want to paint this picture um, that uh, kind of portrays the a true image of the young people. We have the young, young, I see this young man or young lady standing in the center and on one extreme on the right side is the school and then on the other extreme we, we find there's the community and before him there's the church and their friends and there's family. He's neither here nor there trying to find his way, trying to connect with the school. There are no friends at school, trying to connect with the faith community. Nothing is meaningful. And maybe trying to connect with the community and is being out, outright written off as hopeless and friends have cast him off and the family has written him off and he's neither here nor there. So when the young people then are caught in this maze of wanting to fit in, 
neither here nor there. We need to come up with a holistic uh, plan that we can use to integrate them to every facet of the community. If we are to have functional youths who will complete the commission of Jesus Christ and live a fruitful and a helpful life while they are here on earth. In the last five years, uh, the church uh, through the ministry has used a, a relay um, analogy. And now there's the proposition to use an actuary one that depicts a young man holding a bow and arrow or an elderly holding a bow and arrow. And, and this model, as you see, of uh, this actuary um, uh, model of a bow and arrow is kind of like uh, bridging the gap that we uh, explained. That is bringing all the stakeholders, bringing the parents and bringing the educational uh, institution and bringing the community and the faith community as well and bringing the, the friends all into one collaborating, discipling uh, instrument to try to hold together the young man who's likely to lose his, his calm and still. And so the Bible says, borrowing from this uh, picture of a warrior, it says, like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Now let us return to this uh, text and, and ask the question, why arrows are being used here? Why does the Bible want to use uh, and uh, uh, signify or exemplify the young people as arrows in the hand of a warrior? Now, one thing that I want us to admit here is that an arrow is a very dangerous weapon, but the Bible uses that. So in other words, our youth will live dangerously for the Lord. Our youth are dangerous uh, are instruments that need to be handled with care. Be, and and, 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 and the, the warrior must use his skill or his skill to, to train the arrow and aim and let go of the arrow and allow it to move in a very, very um, uh, well-directed uh, uh, point. And so youths, youth ministry is more than just keeping our youth in the church pews. In fact, um, when we look at the ministry of youth ministry, it means that the church must not see the young people as merely collectible items of trophies. To be, to be collecting dust in the church pews. But instead, we need to reorient our minds and instead as leaders, as parents and guardians and youth leaders, we must see our young people as arrows designed to be sent across enemy lines. So we need to hold those arrows delicately and train them specifically to point at the specific target and let go of the arrow with the, train, the training and the wisdom and the knowledge and skill, our youth can therefore be used as missionaries across the seas or across the street for Jesus Christ. Uh, it's probably no coincidence that even the I will go logo has actual arrow inserted in it if you check it out. So our young people, we need to understand that youth ministry is more than just keeping our youth in the church pews, but they need to be sent out there. So we are sending them behind the enemy line. There are three reasons basically why Adventist youth will live dangerously for the Lord and not give up. Now, youth ministry must adopt an offensive approach. And this is what I want to present during this time of our ministry, that <clears throat> we need to send them right behind the enemy lines. You know what that means? I checked it out. It means that God is calling them as it were on a suicide mission, not in a literal sense. <clears throat> he's calling the young lifers, as German philosopher Dritit Bonhoeffer said, he's calling them to come <clears throat> and give their lives. He's actually calling them to die for him. So youth are willing to die for a cause that is worth dying for. So these are the three reasons that I want to share with you. Number one is that as arrows, they need to be redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so young people need assurance of salvation. So there are also at least um, uh, the, 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 the reason we need to appreciate in the fact that 
if, if our young people have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, they can be used for the glory and honor of the Lord. And so this happens when our young people have received and continuously received the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and, and they have been provided with forgiveness and the peace of God and victory and assurance of salvation and a brand new royal identity at the cross. And when they have received this tag to be led by the Spirit of God, as we say, to lead the young people into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. So it's not just a relationship, but it's a saving relationship where they are now jointly uh, 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 like as it were tied together with Christ. And so the first point is that they need to be redeemed by the blood. The second one is that they need to be revived by his spirit. And so when the spirit is poured out on the young Adventists, they will rise and become an exceedingly great army for the glory and honor of the Lord. Then thirdly, why would a youth um, risk all for Jesus Christ if they have been rightly trained by the leaders? And this is where we come in, my fellow brothers. Youth need to be trained. Our young people are willing to work if they are taught how to work. And so this happens when young people saturate themselves daily with the word of God, when they are filled with the spirit of God to become not just arrows but firebrands, when they have been facilitated through training and drills, skilling, and they are ready to go out there and make a difference in the world. And that is necessary. That is possible if we allow our youth to be trained in. Like some, somebody said, one writer said that they are willing to go if they are, they've been taught how to do it. And so the Bible compares biological and spiritual parents to warriors or archers who are tasked with the responsibility of sending young people across enemy lines. And we are here to say, parents and leaders and pastors and teachers and youth leaders, you have been tasked with the utmost responsibility to send these young people across enemy lines. And so the Bible compares them to, 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 uh, to arrows. Now, and so when we read in, uh, coming back to Psalm 127, verse 4, it says, Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Interestingly, the Apostle Paul also describes himself as a spiritual father to Timothy. And so we have spiritual parents to these children. These are the leaders. These are the pastors and the, and the other leaders. So it means that the success of Adventist youth ministries and leaders and pastors and professors is not only in the ability to sit the young people at our programs or events or classes or services, but it's in our ability to send them as arrows into the harvest as well. So how are we going to mobilize them to send them out? So success in Adventist ministry is not measured by their seating capacity, but by the sending capacity. So the question that comes here is basically how many of these young people who have attended congresses and retreats and companies are now actively involved in mission? And what mission uh, initiatives are they involved in if you are to make major progress? And so many are asking the question, why are we losing our youth today? Uh, and this is a rightful concern. The, the truth of the matter, dear brothers and sisters, is that we need to step up and stop seeing our youth as collectibles that need to be placed in the church pews and start sending them out as firebrands, as arrows that carry fire to go and ignite the word for Jesus Christ. So, so I want to conclude then with the question, how may we retain them? How may we retain these uh, young people? Now, I want to take us to 1 Samuel chapter 14. The Philistine army had surrounded the Israelites and would soon wipe them off from the face of the earth. And instead of courageously leading uh, King Saul cowardly, hides under a pomegranate tree. And as a result, he watches his young army defect and desert until from 3,000 strong force, there were only 600. So as he was still hiding, the Bible says, fortunately, his son Jonathan, a courageous leader, almost 
He had only, like one brother says, he had only one pathfinder in his club and he declares, I will go. And he leads courageously behind enemy lines. And the Bible says he climbs the, the cliff and gets behind the enemy and there he, he starts massacring them. So his courageous leadership inspires the youth who had left King Saul. And they joined Jonathan and the supernatural and victorious youth movement took place that day. And so we need to realize that we can uh, not only just talk about it, but we need to be there to excite them and enthuse them with the uh, willingness to go out and make a difference for Jesus Christ. So and as God's arrows, our young people are most certainly then wired to live dangerously for him. And this is why leading them is courageous mission. It calls forth for, for uh, courage like uh, we, we, we see uh, Jonathan taking it. And one of the things that we want to point out this year is to turn our allies, or rather our enemies, into our allies and listing our enemies to be our allies. One of the enemies of the church has been the cell phone. And we're here to uh, uh, present to you the cell phone ministry as uh, a very... Uh, a much opportun opportunity that we can explore with. Behind the enemy lines, we are converting the cell phone that we were working against. I've seen in so many churches written, uh, uh, switch off cell phones and all that. Uh, some even write, don't bring cell phones and all that. But now I probably see members saying, please keep your cell phones on mute. Because now we are beginning to realize our cell phone is not our enemy, but our allies. This is where our young people can keep their spiritual prophecy, their, their church hymnals and Bibles and all the resources that we, can, we need. We need to stop harassing them and start uh, teaching them how they can use their cell phone for the glory of God. There is the Give Him 20 initiative that the General Conference has unveiled where we are saying the young people must spend about 20 minutes only in cell phone ministry each day for the glory of God. Give Him 20. Give Jesus 20 minutes of your cell phone for the glory of His name. So rather than fighting these gadgets, we must tolerate them um, remember, many years back, we used to have problems with tents. Those who couldn't afford tents started to say, you guys are falling, you're bringing tents. We must use uh, these, uh, uh, these uh, leaves uh, for camping, you know. I don't know where they got the idea. And people were bringing tents, were like falling, wanted to bring luxury. And soon we see people bringing or touring caravans because there's no way we can keep cutting trees. So it's not, it's not a question of um, is it right or wrong. It's a question of embracing change gradually because it brings with it a train of resources and opportunities. And so we need to move. We need to move. Now I'm saying then uh, our bows, the sending catalysts, are then what we would call the pastors, the leaders, the parents, and the guardians who have been granted the privilege to disciple the young people, they are the bow that must be trained and, and pulled backward. And then the arrow is the young person that must be shot. And if it's well trained, it will hit the target. So we believe the concluding three components assembled and implemented this year will put this in the right trajectory. Will put uh, the, the youth leaders in the right trajectory, in the right place. Number one, we're going to be conducting trainings. We want to train directors in, and leaders and pastors and all the mentors in leading the young people. And then secondly, we want to increase accession, retention, reclamation, and participation of young people. So we want to run retention and reclamation programs for the youth in the 21 districts. And you know that the, uh, the youth ministries uh, program is fully fleshed with all those trainings and drills and skills and, and workshops and all that that we want to implement to the end that we retain our youth that have fallen away. And then and, and thirdly, the holistic empowerment of young people as stewards. And our main emphasis this year is not just to teach them to give, but to teach them to, to, to find, or rather to be able to go and make efforts to uh, be industrious so that they are able to give. Because most of the time you ask them to give, but they ask, what shall we give? We have nothing. And so allow me then to conclude uh, by saying 
we are geared up to operate online fully as a ministry. Please check our Facebook page, West Marble Conference Youth Ministries. Visit the page and like it and share comments. Uh, and also, if you have anything that you think would be of interest to the young people, kindly share with us. We pray that God will help us. Uh, some of the initiatives that we're going to be highlighting will be explained as we share the material, like the SYL school that is going to be run corresponding with the uh, master guide. May the Lord help you. I think having so said, allow me just to transition to the other departments because I'm not only leading youth ministers, but I'm also taking care of the chaplains. Now, in the last uh, maybe nine minutes, allow me then to summarize uh, Adventist youth, uh, sorry, Adventist uh, chaplaincy ministry also looks at uh, setting operatives in uh, various areas. Uh, we're working with the police to uh, kind of consolidate them one into some kind of uh, a structure so that we can resource them, train them, and mobilize and send them forth also as our firebrands behind the enemy lines. And so we're adopting this I will go youth mantra to also extend it to the chaplains as well. So we only establish operational structures of chaplaincy ministry in the West Mbappe Conference. And so we will initiate and uh, uh, take our chaplains through the IGO initiative, which is a general conference uh, project. And then secondly, we are also targeting about seven chaplains that we want to secure to be attached with the churches. We have uh, identified uh, Polytechnic, we have identified United College of Education, Lopane State University, among others, where we are going to be sending a chaplain full-time to save so that they provide spiritual uh, nourishment to the students there. And also, we are hoping to be addressing these psychosocial problems that are related to COVID and all that through the uh, mentorship of our, our chaplains who have been trained in clinical pastoral education. So we are hopefully going to be implementing that by the grace of God. And then uh, coming uh, then to the uh, public campus ministry, basically uh, similar models will also exist, like setting up three PCM chapters within West Mbappe co co constituency. We are setting up a, 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 a chapter at uh, Polytechnic, uh, Bulaya Polytech, a chapter at Lupan Adventist Students Association, that is Lupan University, and a chapter also in United College of Education. They were going to register students and then using social media, we will engage the PCM members. They're running virtual services so that should anything go wrong, we'll be able to uh, move together. And then obviously one of our strategies is to train the pastors and the PCM coordinators in how to run the public campus ministries by the grace of God. And then also, hopefully, uh, by the time you listen to this, we, we, we are definitely running a student mentorship program in one of the selected uh, uh, institutions. Then in conclusion, allow me to conclude with uh, music ministry. I believe that uh, by far the most silent and hardly explored uh, ministry in the church is the ministry music ministry. Ellen Wright says that we don't make the most of this ministry. And she says that many times music is done out of impulse. People are led to blunder along. They don't even know the words. Please let's project our music for the benefit of our visitors and our members who may not know the, the lines. Let's deliberately engage music, not just as a time buster to say, while we're waiting for the preacher, let's just be inserting some, some music here. Music is a complete ministry. In fact, as I was reading, Ellen White says music can be used not just for witnessing, but music can be used, my fellow brothers, even bringing the spiritual realities among the members in inculcating the principles and, and sharing the most sublime of truths and the most, uh, uh, I would say, the most uh, deepest uh, themes or theological themes can be conveyed in music. So we want to challenge the groups. We want to challenge the young people, especially as we are rebranding. We are saying bring the young people, the leaders, let's collaborate together and work with the old established messiahs and let's have the new messiahs also being established in all these churches. We have young people who are gifted and blessed who can make a difference for Jesus Christ. 
but the only thing they know is just to put their headphones and enjoy the music alone. We are saying music is meant to be sociable. It's meant to be something that we, we share together. So we are going to be running a music festival. We are going to be certifying music directors. We are going to be training conductors as well. Please bear with us. You may think this is all tradition and all that. We are aware of different genres. We are tolerant. We are tolerating. We are also even exploring the possibilities of recording even the audios and, and even videos and, and, and the staff working with our unions. We have already launched this uh, desire to say, why can't we do our own recording at home so that you guys don't have to keep going to East Conference, taking our music and taking all the talent there. We have the facility here. We are gifted. We have the, the know-how. We can do it only if you avail yourself. And so one of our goals, I uh, believe by far, of leadership in the ministry is that we want to facilitate music production and recording for at least one music group per zone. We already have identified one group in, in Wange. Royalty we already have shared with us one of their pieces, and we are saying these ones we are keeping, they are not going anywhere. We know you are many. They in Bulawayo East and all these other places, please kindly come forward, step forward, young people. Let's unite for a good cause. And then in conclusion, again, under music, is we're going to be training music coordinators in 31 districts. Let me then conclude in the last three minutes of my time with saying to us, when the Bible speaks of going, when uh, the Lord says, uh, I will go, and, 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 and he went down to planet Earth and became the propitiation for the, for the sinners, and he died for you and I. He knew what that entailed, because Ellen White says that he reached eternity when he left his father to come down here. Because of you, he would not remain in heaven. And so I want to say to you, my fellow brothers, I will go presents before us a very, uh, if I may say, it's more than just a logo for the Adventist uh, World Church or the Adventist Youth Ministry. I'm here to say that I will go is our response to the great commission of our great God, who's not willing that any should perish, but all might come to the repentance and the knowledge of truth. I will go, then is our commitment as Joshua, like leaders to lead and send our young people behind enemy lines and advocate for the ministries of the youth and advocate for the uh, um, um, special programs for the young people. Let's have a youth church. If possible, youth can come together on Fridays and meet together and worship and fellowship. Uh, we, I, I will go, is saying, then we will talk, take our young people and send them behind the enemy lines. So what you have just listened to here is not just a plan. It's not just a simple strategy. What you've just listened to here is a cry to say that we cannot do it alone. We need you. Because like the prophet, if you read in the book of uh, Kings, I believe in the book of Kings, when the sons of the prophets came to him and say, we are going to fell down the trees and build a bigger structure. And the old man says, go. But then one is wise enough, he has a mind to say, why don't you come with us? And the Bible says that he says, said, I will go. And the moment he goes with them, Things happen, excess start to float, and all these things. And so I want to say that we are ready to go, oh, our elderly, we are ready to go, our pastors. We, we are enthused with the mission to go, but we cannot go uh, it alone because we are not experienced, because we don't have the skill to make the eggs head float, because we understand that there's no way that an ex can, can float in water. We need your experience. We need the mystery of your wisdom and, and 
with and, and your experience to be with us. And so we are calling to say, if you are ready to come with us, we are ready to go make a difference. We are ready to go be the same one. We are ready to go be the hands and the feet of Jesus Christ. We are ready to go because it is only in going that we realize our own salvation can be uh, established. May God help us. May God bless you all. May God continue to shower his blessings upon you. Uh, why don't we pray for these initiatives and allow the spirit of God and his grace to uh, be poured upon us. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for the privilege of sharing. It is not always easy, Father, but we realize that we just need to take the first step. And sometimes the poor soul does not know where to put the first foot on the rung and they just wander and blunder along the way. But here, your Lord, you are saying, it is only possible when we, the elderly, will take the young and courageously lead them forth behind the enemy lines and send them like firebrands and, and train those arrows against the target with the warrior-like skills. We want to pray that we are ready to go, we are ready to be sent, we are ready to be explored in the ministries for the young people and all these other departments and initiatives you have shared. So bless us, Father, we pray, and continue with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.